we were told by the Russian finance minister a few weeks ago that indeed this would be a new currency, the BRICS currency that will be issued, that will be a reserve currency to challenge a dollar. It will be a basket of local currencies, as they call it, meaning those entities that are part of the BRICS nations, and will be pegged to commodity. And so when we talk about the massive selling of bonds by countries like China uh, and Russia and Saudi Arabia, all these countries are selling bonds. China sold about 150 billion worth over the last eight months, every single month. They're selling because the weaponizing of the dollar, the way that we did it, kicking Russia out of SWIFT, has incentivized not only things like the SIPS system, the cross interbank payment system, which usurps SWIFT, or the Embridge, which allows for cross border trading of central bank digital currencies, or massive acquisition of gold and selling of dollars to not be reliant upon the U.S. dollar, like little old Ghana, tiny little emerging nation in Africa who just said we're done buying oil with dollars because what has happened as the dollar has gotten so strong and all of these countries not only have to buy oil in dollars, but their debt is in dollars, they have to sell their local currency, which exacerbates the inflation and, and, and the, the, the decreasing value of their local currency in, in pursuit of the ever higher dollar, but they have to buy that dollar to buy oil and to pay off their debt. So they sell their currency, which increases inflation, drops the value of their currency. They have to buy the high price dollar to buy oil. It's, a, it's something, it's a vicious loop. So Ghana says, we're done. We're going to tell all the gold producers in the country that they have to give 20% or sell 20% to the government so we can buy oil. So and not use the dollar. But this is a trend that we are seeing with gold, with commodities, moving away from the dollar, and this massive coalition, this, this, this grouping of countries that are standing up against the West and the way that it works, the way the whole thing works is, yeah, it's the, um, the rallying cry of the Western hegemony, uh, uh, of the Western uh, hypocrisy that gets everyone to the table. Right. It's the pegging. It's the pegging of gold to a distributed ledger technology that that makes it work. That gives everyone equal footing at the table. That doesn't make it where one country has so much of a greater influence, kind of like the United States over the United Nations, it, where all the countries would have an equal say based upon what they are pledging to the new system. So. You will see more and more and more and more countries accumulate gold. And there is no reason that they have any interest in being honest or forthright uh, to anyone, including the United States, because all of that, all that will do is if you see the central banks are, are massively accumulating gold, way more than is being reported. Well, what are you going to do? Right. What am I going to do? We're going to follow what the most influential, well-funded, well-informed traders on the globe are doing, right. de-dollarizing, buying gold. We should all be doing that as is. The difference is, is that you have to dig much deeper and listen to this show or others in order to be able to discern this, is that we are not being fed any of this information, at least very, very small bits and pieces if you really are paying attention from the mainstream. So yeah, crazy, crazy times, man, no question about it. I think it's inevitable. I do believe it is inevitable. Um, and they asked, I believe it was Ernest Hemingway, mm -hmm. how'd you go broke, Ernest? And his answer was, I think, what our answer will be. How did the dollar collapse? Little by little, and then all at once. And that's how Ernest Hemingway went broke. That's how the dollar will collapse. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. The little by little is you are seeing the de-dollarization around the globe. And even though the dollar is strong in its relation to the dollar index, it's, that's because it's measured against a bunch of basket case currencies that are in worse shape than we are, Australia and Canada and the United Kingdom and um, in Japan. And, and so from a standpoint of the dollar index, fine, 
it has a relative strength, but look at what it's buying here at home uh, and look at the the prospect of it really doing anything, standing up against countries that are massively accumulating gold and coming together under an admitted new standard that will be pegged to commodities. I believe ultimately, inevitably, if you are fully invested in dollars, you're destined to go broke. And I don't know when that happens uh, little by little then all at once but what i do think is that when we accumulate things like cryptocurrencies and precious metals i think if you approach it from at least even cryptocurrencies okay if you look at your cryptocurrencies from the standpoint of them being wealth not getting wealthy from them not looking at it as an investment but as wealth you i think will fa- have a much easier time choosing which cryptocurrency to buy, understanding the role of precious metals and not doing things for the wrong reason, not inverting your pyramid. What I mean by that is that when you when you look at things that are speculative, that are high yielding potential, make a lot of money, those should be at the very tip of your financial pyramid. And the base of your pyramid should be things that are stable, that are low growth, low risk, low yield. Now, when I think of silver as an example, I think you could argue that its potential performance puts it at the top of the pyramid. Yet it's been wealth for 5,000 plus years. I look at it as very conservative. This silver eagle that I'm holding, you know, to me, it's not anything speculative. I can feel this, I can hold it and I can give it to my daughter who can give it to her daughter someday, who can give it to her daughter someday. And in the year 3000, when my grandkids are spending this, my great, 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 great grandkids are spending this, God willing, long after the, the money in my wallet is hanging from a frame in the Smithsonian, this will still be immutable wealth. Now, I don't look at this as speculative, although the return potential for it is extraordinary. And anyway, so I, I just think that um, people need to, to look to to alternative investments right now because the dollar ultimately is going to collapse when or how or what the trigger is we don't know perhaps it's the fact that there's 85 trillion dollars in fx swap debt more or less missing because it's off the balance sheets and it all comes due within the next year so you have 85 trillion dollars in foreign currency swaps which is a derivative which is not on the balance sheets and and of of that i don't know a third of it or two-thirds of it is non-bank uh debt off of corporations who are making these currency swaps uh which are derivatives that are on not on their balance sheet but that all of this debt almost all that comes due in 2023, $85 trillion worth. That Maybe that's the thing that bang, blows up the whole system, creates a derivative time bomb. And the way all of these banks are incestuously connected, the systemic risk of holding dollars right now yes. and being fully invested in dollars and all of your money in a bank is, is historically high. This is why we're looking for an exodus out of the system to things like precious metals and cryptocurrencies, it is not to get wealthy. Now, you very well may get wealthy. And if you own enough precious metals, you will be wealthy. But that's not why I talk about it to your question. I think it's just a matter of time and something, whether it be FTX, whether it be the the, all the derivatives that have come due in 2023. And this is not just from me. The Bank of International Settlements just published a report last week saying this is a huge problem. It's a a time bomb waiting to go off. $85 trillion worth of missing dollar debt. And they call it missing because it's not on the balance sheets, but they know that it all comes due in 2023, one year maturities. uh, And as things slow down and companies start to default, see the whole premise of a a, um, a derivative is, is counterparty's ability to perform. That's what what gives it its value. Uh, and if the counter- counterparty can't perform, then the whole thing starts to, to go haywire and everyone is connected. And it's, I think, ultimately the dollar collapses. The question is, 
what is the trigger and there are a million million of them out there not least to say the massive de-dollarization by the world's central banks in pursuit of things like precious metals